Hello everyone, we have this integral here, cosine of x to the second power. So for integrating this, we can have multiple ways of doing it. One way is to use uh, the half angle or the double angle formula. We did, we did it last time and we changed this cosine square of x into a linear expression in cosine. So we can integrate that directly. This time we are going to do it differently. We are going to use integration by parts for this. So in order to use integration by parts, we first need to write it as a product. And so the first step is to rewrite this as cosine of x times cosine of x, because that's a square, right? So we can do that. Um, we also need to we also need to call this integral or give it a name. We, we can call this integral b, right, or b of x. And so just call this integral b of x. And so that means we can we don't have to just keep writing this integral. We can just, just start by writing, okay, so b is equal to the integral of cosine of x times cosine of x and then dx. Okay, so now that's a product. So we can set up the u, v, du, dv table for integration by parts. So let's do that. We have u is equal to some stuff, and then v is equal to, and then dv, right? Okay, so what are we choosing for our u? It's, you don't really have that many choices, right? You actually only have one choice. You can either let cosine square of x be the whole u, or you can just let one of them be the u. So, of course, we are going to just make things simple here. We are going to let u be cosine of x. It actually becomes more... Uh, complicated when you let u be cosine square of x. And you may not be able to integrate once you have the v and then the du multiply together. So we are going to let u be cosine of x here. So let u be cosine of x. And so that means our dv would be the rest of the stuff, which is cosine x and then times dx. So we put that here. So cosine x and then dx. Okay, so now differentiating the cosine x, we are going to get negative sine x dx. Integrating the cosine x here, we are going to get just the sine x, right? Positive sine x. Okay, so the table is finished setting up, so we can now start writing down the right-hand side of the integration by parts formula, so we can write um, just keep writing the b here. Now uv, uv is cosine x times sine x, right? So we can put down sine x cosine x. I usually write sine in front of cosine, so that's why I just organize the factors a little bit here. But it doesn't matter. You can write cosine first if you want to. Okay, now uh, let me highlight the, the negative integral of v to u here because that's the important part. So we have the negative integral, right? So we put the integral here. Now, what is v? V is sine x, right? So just put the sine x right here. And then what about the du? The du is negative sine x dx. Remember, this is multiplication, so you cannot really simply just put minus sine x dx here because that now it becomes subtraction. So what do you need to do? You need to put a pair of parentheses around the, the second sine x that we have here so that it's multiplying by the by negative sine x. Yeah, so make sure your notation is correct when you're doing this step. Okay, so cleaning up this step here, we are getting what? We are getting sine x, cosine x, and then plus. Uh, how do we get the plus right here? We have minus, and then there was another minus sign. So negative 1 times negative 1 will give you a positive 1. And then you get integral of sine x times sine x, which will give you sine square of x, and then dx. And then usually at this point, we are going to look at whether we can integrate this integral directly. Uh, the problem is we cannot, right? Because as you can see here, this is not really better than the cosine square of x. You really simply just change the cosine to the sine, but that's not getting us anywhere. But we can do something right here right now, which is to turn sine square of x into an expression in terms of cosine 
we can use the Pythagorean identity here. So if we're changing that, then that's actually what? That's actually, yeah, so we are going to use the Pythagorean identity, which is sine square of x. I mean, 1 minus cosine square of x. Yeah, so that's what we need to change here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that. So next step, we have b is equal to sine of x, cosine of x, and then plus the integral. Now, let me change that into 1 minus cosine square of x. And then, well, the dx doesn't change, right? So let me just go back to blue. Okay, so we have this. Now, how many turns do you have here? We have two turns right here, right? I know that it looks worse, but uh, things is going to get better once we separate this integral into two smaller integrals here. So the next step is to just separate this integral. So we are getting sine of x and then cosine of x, and then plus the integral of 1 and then the x, and then minus the integral of cosine square x dx. Now, do you see what's going on here? We can integrate this. Integral 1 is easy to integrate. What about the, this one? We still cannot integrate that, that, but you realize that that's actually the original integral. So we can replace this integral by just b, right? We don't need to write the integral anymore. And so we can do that. So let me just indicate here that this whole thing right here is what? It's just b of x. Okay, so let's do that in the next step. We have b is equal to sine of x, cosine of x, and then plus. Now we can start integrating. We can integrate this one here, which is just x, right? There are also constants of integration, but we can always just put all the, um, the sum of all those constants as just the c, right? So we don't need to worry about the constant integration at this point. Okay, now what's going on? This one changes to the b. So we have minus, minus the what? The b, right? So we have the b here. Now remember our goal here is to find b because b is equal to the integral of cosine square of x, right? So what we can do right now is to just solve this equation for b. And so you can add b to both sides of the equation, which will give you, so adding b to both sides of the equation, you get 2b is equal to sine x cosine x plus x. Okay, so what we can do is that we just need to solve for b here, divide both sides by 2, then you can get the b isolated. So divide both sides by 2, we get b is equal to 1 half sine x cosine x and then plus 1 half x. And then now we can plus the constant of integration. Yeah, again, this b is a function. It's the, in, the original integral. And then the c is the constant here. And so we, we did this integral here using integration by parts. We didn't use the double angle formula. We didn't use a half angle formula. We only use the Pythagorean identity here where we have one minus cosine square of X is equal to sine square of X. Yeah. So, um, how do you, how do you feel about this method here? Is it, is it easier or do you think it's more difficult compared to using the half angle and the double angle formula? It's you decide, right? So you can compare the two videos and you can also compare the two, two process and see which one that you prefer of doing. Okay. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.